everybody, welcome to another episode of The Correndo Show. Today I have a very special guest. I have a, a former chief nurse in, a, in a, what was it again? Uh, hemo, that, hemo hemodialysis, dial- yeah. Hemodialysis. Uh, like you said, she's a uh, chief, uh, former chief nurse. She started from the very bottom. She's going to explain her story. Ended up becoming chief nurse. And, and she just recently left that place. And, uh, you know, she wanted to be... Uh, on the front line at a general hospital starting all, all over and uh, working with COVID patients so she wanted to help the community out because uh, that's always been her goal so uh, yeah let's get it started uh, tell us a little bit about yourself I started studying to be a nurse several years ago which I was thinking when I was going to do this podcast I started thinking how long it has been since I started being a nurse and I that about that it was been about 15 years already 15 that's a lot when i barely started it's not that i went to work right away or that i finished that time but it's a long time <laughs> um over here in mexico we can there's some schools that you can work, go to high school level at the same time as you can work with a technician to get a technician career and i went to that I went to study technician nursing while I was in high school. I didn't finish and then I went to study to the United, but I started back then. Then after that, I went back to study nursing in Guadalajara a couple of years later. And I just found out that that's what I wanted, that that's what I liked, it, even though that I was that has started with another career before. I first followed to be a nutritionist and then I decided that nursing was my thing. And what was the reason uh, you weren't into nutrition? Uh, Is it I liked it. I liked it because ever since I thought what I wanted to do or like what career that I wanted to pursue it was to be nutritionist. That's actually why I wanted to go to the United States because I wanted to to learn or uh, better my English the little level I, I had so I can go to another country and use and study I don't know how you say that in English acupuntura you know the little needles that they put on oh, your acupuncture yeah I mean I wanted to go to some other country but I knew that I was not going to speak the the language of them but I knew that with the English you could be a better option yeah you had english and spanish the two most i think common or the biggest most known languages in the world i believe yeah and then when i was already studying my first year of nutritionist i decided that i wanted to do nursing because i missed that environment i miss being in the hospital i be i missed it being first contact with the patients and there i knew that even with this but the other career i had nutritionist there's a part of it that it's all clinical that you can be in the hospitals and everything but you don't get to be with the patients you don't get to treat treat them all the sickness fully as you would do being a nurse and i just decided that was my thing and i went back to it and uh you know talking to you your your english is really great uh how how did you how did you learn english and like how did you start or it's not so great because and I do get nervous a lot, and when I get nervous, it's like I, I can continue. Sometimes I had to stop and translate stuff in my head. I one time you, you're a lot better than uh, when when you're on the airlines, and you know sometimes you hear people speaking English, and like <laughs> I was like, what what are they saying? Like I'm just I'm just saying, you know your your English is really clear, it's really good, so so don't beat yourself on it. But uh, yeah yeah, go go ahead continue. When I was a little girl. Um, what I would say, I would say like three, four years or so. My, I had an uncle that he wanted his children to learn full full English, so he bought these videos uh, for them to to learn the language. And the videos they come, it was pure language um, movies. They could show you directions, colors, this and that, and it was a whole movie different videos of it and it was full in English and full in Spanish mm-hmm. and I we love watching movies when like we were little and I would repeatedly 
put the same tape that they left us one day. We had the two of them, the English and Spanish. They gave it to my dad and my mom. And we just thought that they forgot about them. But I think, yeah, it was just on purpose <laughs> for mm-hmm. us to learn. And I learned the whole thing. So with that, I learned a little bit of the basics. And after, my dad will always rent movies uh, so we can watch it at home. And he would say that they didn't have... They didn't have it in in Spanish, so he would always rent it in English and we had to read it. So now I understand that he did it with the purpose that we could like know another language and to be able to read more. So that did did help. And did your dad also learn English or did he pick up on it? Actually, like, I, I never thought that I'm, that my dad I knew English or so. Like, he never told me or anything. Yeah. But now that I go with him and we're speaking English next to him and everything, we can see that he understands. So, yeah. Yeah, so that didn't pick up on it. Yeah, <laughs> I never, that never thought, that thought never crossed my mind. But actually, I think that's something that happened. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so that. And then at school, I had teachers ever since first grade and that they were kind of teaching us English but it was just a really basics of it you wouldn't really learn much of it and back in the days I went to a boarding school and right there we had a teacher that she really really knew how to how to teach her class and she made us learn all the the verbs the irregular verbs that's how you call them verbs yeah mm-hmm. well she would make us learn all the verbs and that really did help me and so for that when i went to study it was my senior year in high school mm-hmm. i found that i my english wasn't so bad because i went and i could i really could understand everything what people was saying and I wasn't able to express myself. Yeah. I was just so shy. Whenever like people wanted to talk to me, if they wanted to talk English, I could really understand everything, but I couldn't talk back. Like I would just speak Spanish. Right. Yeah. I even remember I had this counselor really mean that she um, didn't didn't wanted to put me on the regular classes when I went when i entered high school over there i didn't even knew that that you can have different levels even if you have two years already in school but if you haven't passed your what would you say that your basics your exams or your requirements or whatever like they put you in the lowest levels Mm -hmm. like over here in mexico most likely you advance at your age you know like it's not like you have classes with with all with different different years like i had i had classes you mean mean like uh you were senior and you had like freshmen and sophomores in your in your class yeah and in mexico you guys don't have mixed yeah no we we don't have that Mm -hmm. we're all seniors we're all sophomores yeah so when i went over there i looked at a lot of little like small kids and everything (laughs) as well smaller than me yeah (laughs) and i was like how come that i'm here with them and i see another ones that they look older why am i here and then i found out that they never added my transcripts from back in mexico Mm -hmm. and i was basically in my senior year barely starting high school for them and i had a counselor that she didn't help me much that i went i went to talk to her and i asked her like why i was taking classes with this freshman if i was already a senior and she didn't really take much of her time to to i guide me through it or to explain me that was was your school big yeah it was it was big i don't think that it was the system of the school i was i really i had always thought that it was personal with my counselor and she was i would have to say that she was kind of racist with me because hmm, i don't know in other schools but these counselors you get it like through the alphabet with the by your, the, last by your last name right. and I had another friend that she had also barely came from Mexico to study over there in LA and her last name was also Garcia and she never really cared about going to to talk with the counselor yeah. or anything about being in regular classes because as soon as she went to the school she said she didn't like it and she was going to go back to Mexico that she only wanted to study one year to perfect her English as well mm-hmm 
but I, I that wasn't my plan. That was not my plan. I really wanted to finish right, right there. So I went to, up to her and I told her like, what did I need to in order for me to to finish high school? Because it it seemed like I was barely studying. Like I said, I didn't have any class classes on my transfers or or nothing. And and she didn't really wanted to do anything about me. Like she didn't let me another option other as adult school to catch up with the classes or, or any other things and I she told me that the only thing that she could do for me because I was 17 and I was about to be 18 that she can let me to she can let me be in the school for one full year and an extra one to be the super senior <laughs> and try to to get as much requirements class required classes mm-hmm. in order to to finish but she believed that she, it, it was impossible for me to to do it all like that so she I asked her like what do you think is a bit option for me is it a, a, am I gonna be able to finish here or should I just go back to Mexico and and finish it over there because I have good grades I want to get a scholarship and go to university and this and that you know and she really didn't explain anything to me. When I say that I wanted to go back to Mexico, uh, she was like, yeah, I think it's better for you to go back. And for this, I wouldn't speak to her directly because like I say, I was shy. Mm-hmm. So I asked a friend to translate for me and later the, the vice principal, she translated for me. And I remember one day that I went to their office and I just told them, you know what? Like, I know I've been insistent too much, but as you say, like this is the best, the best option for me is to go back to Mexico and continue with my good grades and everything because of the scholarship that I wanted to get. So I want to say thank you for all your time, this and that, and I'm leaving, right? And then I remember that she turned, that my counselor, she turned to the vice principal and she was like, she just said it like that, like quoting, like, oh, good thing she's going back to Mexico. Like, I don't know how can she even expect to graduate from here if she doesn't even speak English at all she doesn't even speak English to me and better for her to go back to Mexico because she wouldn't even finish nothing here mm-hmm. or something like that I think that it, she the way she said it the everything right. like she, it was very demeaning yeah it was so mean of her like saying that I couldn't do better over there so I remember I turned to her I listened, and she knew that I was able to understand. I couldn't speak to her, but she knew that I understood whatever she was saying. Right. So I told her, you know what, never mind. I'm going to stay. And she's like, what? And I say, I'm going to stay. If I can do two years here, I'm going to stay. So hopefully I can finish, and or if I don't finish, it's okay. But I'm going to stay. I'm going to finish what I started here, so thank you. And I say that in English, talking to, the, to her directly, and she got surprised that I was even talking to her yeah and I remember that I did pretty good I finished the requirements that I had uh, because I say that in Mexico I went to a technician school so it's not that I did full classes of as regular other students that would go do over here so right, I, uh, the difference between you know school in Mexico and, and school in the United States in Mexico like you guys can choose a career like straight once you're in high school, you can choose a career and take classes that will help you get into focus in those 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 uh, career that career, right? And in the U.S., it's like we we just take general classes, like we just a little bit of everything. Yeah, I don't know if all the high schools over here, like I said, when well, I went to a technician one, that yeah. you really totally focus on the whatever technician thing you wanted to be. And other schools, they have this thing called. Bachillerato, which is I think kind of like the guys that you guys get a bachelor's degree or okay. something. That at the end of the high school you pick a specialty you could call it, and you learn more about it. So I don't know if you get a, also a certificate or something because yeah. I didn't go to that. And but yeah, you specialize in something that you want to follow, and you, then you can follow after you finish high school that you can follow in your career but you, or you have more experience about it but yeah that's a, a thing over here so when I went to, to the United and they were telling me 
why did I wanted to specialize or why did I want to go to college for or what's going to be my bachelor's degree it was kind of confusing for me with those those things you know like over here is like como que licenciatura quieres escoger you know it's, it's a different way of saying it and yeah the bachelor's it was like oh that's something that we get over here in, yeah no yeah and, and uh, like you said like Perhaps this the, the counselor that he had. She was racist. I, I don't know uh, whether she was or not. But uh, you know, I th I think uh, a lot of a lot of us we can. Like, I think it's just the school system in the United States. The ge the public school system is really bad. Like, if there's anything I learned, you know, going through the public education system is uh, you know when I have my family of my own, my my kids and everything when they go to school. I'm gonna put them in, in a private school because, uh, yeah, it, you, you get held back so much, and then like, you know, uh, you know whether it be teachers or counselors, you know, a lot of teachers upside you like, oh, you, you know, you can't do that. You're just wasting your time. Like, you know, you want to be a a celebrity or or a musician. You're like, you can't do nothing being a musician. But like, if you're really dedicated to music, you know, there's you'll find a way, you'll, you'll make a living out of it. You know, you may not be a celebrity, you may not be the biggest, but there's there's different ways of, 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 make, of making a, a career out of, out of certain arts, you know? Whether it be, like like I said, music or drawing, you know, being an artist. And I think in the US, uh, they really teach us, you know, you how to follow orders, how to, work for somebody rather than than explore your mind and try to be a, a business owner you know they always say you want to you want to get a good you want to go to school you want to get a good job you want to you want to work for someone really good but no like what they should really be telling you is like hey um, you know work hard you know try to think outside the box and you know the best thing to do is become your own boss but in the public education system they don't teach you that and uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. If, like, like I said, I don't know if it's racism, but uh, when I was a little kid in elementary, you know, I spoke English. You know, my, my at home with my brothers, I spoke English. And then uh, when I was in, in throughout elementary, from from first grade through fifth grade, um, they they always put me in ESL. ESL is uh, English as a second language. Yeah. But yet, you know, when I was when I was taking my my exams, in, in, like the the I think it was the California standard exams. I, I, High I school remember. exit exam? No, 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 and, no. no. Right, um, this is one through fifth grade. Oh. This is like the Can Cal California standardized test, something like that. I would get perfect scores, and like it's like okay, I'm someone who speaks English. I know how to read English. In my class, I was the one who, who knew how to read the fastest, and like I would pronounce the words correctly. I had horrible writing, so <laughs> I'll make that clear. I have ugly writing, but still, I was able to read and write and, and 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 write, you know, perfectly. But still, I was always put in English as a second language, even though I was way better clearly at English than than Spanish. So like, I feel like uh. You know, in a way, they, as a kid, you don't know these things, but, you know, I now that I'm older, I realize, like, they were, they were holding me back. Like, you know, maybe I could have been put in another class with, with other kids and have advanced more or, or whatever. But, uh, yeah, the school system, it, I, it does hold you back. I think that it's because when you enter in school, they ask you what language do your parents speak. And if they speak Spanish, maybe they, they you already put on the English like language because yeah. I I was put on those those classes as well and I had some friends that they would just be speaking English that I think that I was that was your case but in high school and I asked them how come are you here how come are you, you're not put in a regular English class and and they, they didn't know either they didn't know either and then that's the only answer they could tell they could tell me that their parents speak speak English, so because in, it's, I mean, Spanish. Spanish, yeah, sorry. So because Spanish was spoken more at their houses, they were put on those classes. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, I think it's it's, it's pretty bad because, like, like you said, you they're, they're hold they're holding you back. Right. And so for me, I I do can say that I felt that was racist. Maybe yeah. like like I I said it in a better way. How the counselor say that it was better. Like I better go in back to Mexico no, because this and that. But I felt it. I knew the way she said it, and I know I knew yeah, that. You, you can tell the intent. Yeah, and like I said, I have this friend that her last name is like mine and she didn't really care she about she had a different counselor or the same counselor? the same counselor okay. same counselor saying everything we went to the high school exit exam she passed it and as soon as she passed it she uh, the counselor wanted to put her in some other classes and regular classes and for her to finish high school as, as fast as she was able to and that wasn't what happened to me I had to look for the counselor I had to look for the classes I right. had to look to, for everything that like she just called my other friend because yeah like we weren't looking so as alike yeah. as I would say but I felt this so bad that she and I like me and her like being so differently even apparently and everything and your parents? yeah, yeah. and her having the same last name, same chances, same thing because we came into the school the same, same way, time. same timing and same situation with classes and everything. Right. And the good thing is that just asking around, I remember that I was taking soccer at that time and I used to see a lot of students still going after classes to this building and I was curious about it like why a lot of students are going there and then I find out then they told me oh that's adult school that's uh, you fall behind classes you can take it so you can level on uh, high school or if you wanna advance more you can take more classes as well so then I asked them is there a way that I can take those classes right. and thanks to that like, I was able to do it I got to finish whatever they need they told me that I needed two to three years and I was able to finish in one year and a couple of more months wow. but because of everything I took and I did well <laughs> I gotta say. And, 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 your, and your counselor didn't even tell you this. Thing. No. You had to practice that on your own. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. That I took a lot of classes. I took. I can't remember how many credits I took, but yeah, I think that I took like seventeen classes or so, and I still got to have a three point ninety five of GPA or so. Mm -hmm. At For the you? end, at the end of the of the year, the school year, they uh, gave me an award for straight A's that I had. Um, and it was good for me because being from another country, country and everything, I kind of did an effort because she hit me on my pride, you know, yeah. like I wanted to show her like, you know what, like, I can do a lot of stuff here. And I think it was good at the end of the day because she, yeah, she, she, she pushed me to yeah. do a lot of stuff. And, and I remember the day that I, I got to be in a late graduation. She didn't even tell me where the graduation was going to be. She oh, didn't wow. tell me anything. I went, I took my last leave of my adult class saying that I finished in summer, after summer with adult school and everything. Right. I finished and I went to take my last leave of the, the class that I passed it. And, and she was like, she seemed bothered. And I asked her, oh, okay, so when the ceremony is going to be? I don't know. And, you can find out later or I have no that inf I don't have anything of that and information or so yeah. I can fill it and then I, I I straightforward talked to her and I told her you know what I just want to thank you and she's like for what and I was like because because of you I told her you remember you told me that I better went back to Mexico because I couldn't speak Eng English and I couldn't do anything here so there I finished not in two or three years like you told me to, but I finished in one year, I finished in one year and three months, and I had this grades, and I did good. Yeah, you so, it wrong. so That's yeah, <laughs> good awesome. thing, good thing that I didn't follow your advice. Right. And she just stood like there, and you all, showed her up. <laughs> yeah, I showed her up, and I, and everybody on the office, they knew me, and I remember they saying, oh yeah, thank you, and congratulations, <laughs> and this and that, and I can't believe you did it so fast. And when she was just standing there with her face, and I was so proud. Yeah, there's there's just some you know people didn't want others to succeed, you know. 
they're just not miserable with their lives and they try to hold other people down sadly yeah but, um, I know yeah. and then that's a, like that's how I learned a little better Spanish but then I met this friend I had that he told me that he didn't speak Spanish at all which he did I found out 10, la- 10 years later yeah yeah <laughs> and thanks to that like I uh, was talking to him so much that I was I got better yeah. with speaking Spanish so I would say that yeah I do give honor to my dad my classes my teachers and everything but I would say I speak English thanks to this person <laughs> so he by saying he, he didn't speak Spanish he he forced you to speak English all yeah, the time yeah because right? I want to talk to better, him so better much English. That's, that's, that's funny that's interesting it is huh it is it is oh let me is there anything else I can get you you just uh, water or what? for those of you who don't know uh, I'm having some coke and Captain Morgan which is rum spiced rum and uh yeah I I, I think I did it a little too much but I don't know how you see me I think I'm holding up pretty good pretty good <laughs> you haven't even drunk anything <laughs> I haven't drank anything alright there you go Oh, something interesting. So, like I said, uh, we're in Mexico right now. I'm not in LA where I usually film. Uh, <laughs> I found it interesting. Here in Mexico, uh, they passed a law where you guys have to like, label your all your food, right, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, it may not be clear, but here there's this little label that they like stickers that they put on on food and drinks. It is, it says uh, excessive calories, excessive sugar. So, uh, I wonder if that. Is something would that would ever be done in the United States, and what kind of impact? Uh, do you feel like this impacts you when you go shopping? Like you're like, oh fuck, like I didn't know that had sugar or a lot of sugar, or does yeah, it make the, you not purchase the, it? The, the thing, yeah, it does. The thing is that you already know, you know, you already know that you're right. buying something that has a lot of sugar and stuff. But when you are able to get it and, and you see, you see the label. labels, like it reminds you. So it's like, do you really need to eat this? Yeah. Of course, like for regular foods, that there's still like well, obviously regular foods that um as in like regular groceries that you need to make, as in sour cream and stuff like that, cheese or so, you still get them. Right. But for me, as if I'm gonna get those chips that I used to get so often, I still stop myself on. I was now you like, think about it, like before yeah. you would just grab the bag of chips, and now you see that label. Yeah, that's and it's like, do I really need that? Yeah, it makes you really do think about it extra. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, let's continue. Uh, so the reason you're here is, man, we re- recently just saw Texas, uh, I, I believe, the governor, Greg, Greg Abbott of Texas, he wants to open everything fully, you know, back business, school, everything, back on, if I'm not mistaken, March 10th, yeah, which uh, is next week. Okay. And, uh, and he also, like, doesn't want want to make it mandatory to be wearing a mask and uh you know you're you're a nurse uh please educate us on this topic uh how do you feel about it like i think that i feel pretty upset about these things like when the president over here is greeting people without their masks or president of mexico yeah president of mexico and the president people without masks I yeah, there was. Did he just dig it? Just have COVID as well? Yeah. Wow. And then the president over there in the United States, the one that used to be president, yeah, I just yes, he's saying like it's okay, I had nothing. It was just a regular flu. Like, I mean, he almost died. I think. I don't know. <laughs> you know, they'll, but never, I think they'll never tell you. That's but like I, I really this slap, a big slap to our faces, like all the health system. To all the nurses. Yeah, all the, all the people, I the feel pretty offended of, of that those actions with people because I went through that when it was really starting and it was really difficult it was really really traumatizing how do you say it? traumatic tra- tra- traumatizing yeah traumatizing that. yeah that's the word I was looking for it, it was pretty bad like like you said I was a former nurse former ship nurse in, in an hemodialysis clinic so I, those, those people, they already have, like, a compromise of a yeah, bad immune system. They have bad immune system, and those people, you really do need to take care of them. Always. Regular. Imagine with this pandemic, with this right. unknown virus of what it's going to do to people, like, regular people. Now, imagine to these people that they already have compromised system. Right. So, for me, it was a goal that I 
that I had set on my mind ever since I started in that clinic. I started from the bottom, and I'm not gonna leave in, I'm not leaving this clinic until I finish like, as a ship nurse. That I, that's what I wanted to be, and I got to be promoted the starting of the year, January, February, something like that. So I was a, I was barely training to be a ship nurse rather and and in my dialysis, and I was trying to get a hand of it, but. It was then the it was when the pandemic started. Yeah. So we had lack of employees. Lack of employees, huh? Yeah, lack of employees, and it was really hard because as as a chief nurse, you are supposed to be in charge. You know, you are supposed right. to, of course, like to to back up the people and to to help them and everything, but like to do some other stuff, yeah, some they, other tasks. They really threw you into the fire right there. Yeah, <laughs> they did. So we have no staff we have the new ones we have to train them and you still have to be with the patients so (laughs) exactly so it was really really all bad because um it was a lot of responsibility i guess that we had i we were not eating we were not resting i was going from five in the morning to open the clinic and i finished sometimes at 11 or 12 at night and i had to go back the next day and it was just all crazy and i remember even the first case that we have for for COVID that i would say we have for COVID because it was unknown like i said on those days i had a patient that she was feeling so bad uh, on the on the process because yeah. you know like hemodialysis is that their kidneys are they're, they're failing on them they have, right. they, have, they have a kidney failure so the machine works as a kidney for them they take out the the liquids they don't need that they, they can like filter, they, filters their is it filters the blood, the urine? What is it? What is uh, it? Filters the liquids within, within your body, okay. either the waste and the the fluids. And mm-hmm. So usually your kidneys will do that, but since it's a failure, you need to create an access to to get it out. Right. So to get all the the excess of excess of liquid that you already have, get all the toxins and, out, and get the toxins out. Right. So for that, the the animal dialysis you. You, you have that you use your access the, the access for you the the as in it can be a fistula or catheter and it helps you pump out the blood through the machine and and then to the filter and then pump pump it pump it back to your body as well right. already clean and and this is kind of hot already. I lost my, my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you the one drinking or is it, am I the one drinking? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, just, like, I think you were talking about that. <laughs> you, know, you know that meme like where they tell you something that it pumps you out and it reminds you to the really bad days. Oh, and wow. yeah, I was just starting, like saying, thinking you, of how overwhelming this was. <laughs> Was it Donald Duck in, the, in, the, in that cartoon when he goes back to war? And yeah, yeah, something like that. It kind of went like that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, um, I think you're talking about uh, your first patient that, that you realized had COVID. That. <laughs> See? Okay, so this goes out. <laughs> it's because I was trying to like explain what like right, right. hemodialysis was and I got lost on it. Yeah. So yeah, this this patient said they have it. They have pretty difficult because. Um, they already had to be so so really precise with the treatment they have to go three times a week and they have to get strict on their diet they have to get strict on the liquids that they already have and so with this pandemic it was hard on them so i had this patient that she would always get kind of bad on the treatments this treatment affects differently to to every patient right. like you can see them sitting you can see them sitting down and their hair is pumping a lot it's pumping so much like even is if they were to be in a race or something because all the blood it's going around the their system so so fast mm-hmm. so fast so fast so they get like, they get fatigued they get tired because they, they can well, I'm, i mean no, no, not, appa- not apparently but like yeah anything can happen to them so we can really need to be monitoring monitoring, monitoring. 
Yeah, the. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, so I had this patient that she had a regular present a lot of symptoms before that on her treatment. Mm -hmm. But this was something totally different. She started feeling bad. She said that she was starting. She she started feeling. Oh, she was feeling this dizzy. She was feeling cold. She was feeling hot later. Then she started coughing, and then she was saying that she couldn't breathe. And like she she just she was a patient that even though she felt so bad before, she would never like to go to the hospital. And then. She, she asked us so much to take away the the system already to to take her to the hospital that something was uh, wrong so she with knew the, something was yeah different. something was wrong with her she's like i can breathe i can breathe so we took her out we called the ambulance because the, the clinic that i was with, that i was in it was just uh, in my dialysis clinic so mm -hmm. if something went wrong like you need to call the ambulance yes you need to call the ambulance call the ambulance and take it to the hospital so i remember seeing her yeah, I can say that it's a patient that you already know, and you get familiar with these patients because you see them all the time. Right. You see them three times a week, and I don't know another the United States. I don't know how it works, but over here you go to work six days a week because you see patients three times a week, which is they have the treatment Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So you need to be all those days you guys work you, six days a week we do work six days a oh, week oh wow at USA you can't complain we work five days a week yeah full time that's considered oh, yeah. oh wow <laughs> but the thing is like, like I said you get so familiar with the patients that you already kind of know if something goes goes wrong right so with this patient I saw her I, I saw her and everybody got so worried and and all the other patients, if they see a patient getting back like that, like mm -hmm. we had some other patients that start getting bad as well because you know you just it affects the whole yeah mood it affects everybody. everything. Interesting. Yeah, so um, we got the ambulance, and before the ambulance came, she started coughing blood. Oh wow! And and yeah, it was just so 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 weird, like. It's something that you wouldn't regularly see. And you said this was during the beginning of the pandemic? She yeah. was the first one that, that you seen? Yeah, I would say uh, that was well, February or February. so. February, okay. Yeah. That was February Before, or well, so. I think the shutdown was in March of 2020, so. Yeah, something. So you saw like just a, under a month before. Yeah. Wow. And then, um, and then, yeah, so I was talking to the doctor and everything, and we discussed the symptoms and even when we say when we uh, turn into the ambulance you have to give the report and everything mm -hmm. and the doctor and i just agree we're like you know yeah but this can even be the first case that we that we can that we know of of covid right here in the clinic mm -hmm. and yeah like i remember the people right there they didn't want us to say that aloud so nobody yeah, will freak, freak everybody out. Out. Uh -huh, exactly as the the staff and the patients and everything right. but we were already working with some equipment to mm -hmm. protect ourselves and i remember they say you throw everything away get new ones oh, wow. and as soon as you get home sanitize yourself put everything to wash get in the shower and everything that's how we did mm -hmm. and and yeah but I remember that day I had to stay in later to report that and that, I remember it felt so weird like tapping that that it was a probably case of COVID and I was like man like well, this is here like we are facing it and this is really the beginning of it right so then um as the days went went by I got the call to to start working in this other hospital that I wanted to be so bad since so it's a government government institution and the thing is that it was a pandemic time you know mm -hmm. I had started the process before but now as the pandemic started the process had had stopped okay. because well yeah you have to everything do all slowed down. everything slowed down there was a lot of things a step that you need to follow in order to enter this kind of institutions right. and tests blood tests medical tests regular tests to get in and so people were stopping everything so we couldn't enter right. 
and then they were needing stuff of course because the pandemic was going so bad that was a, this was already in march was, yeah, need yeah, staff now. yeah yeah so we were we had already done our test and everything yeah and we stopped again because of the we were on the middle of the medical t test and all that so we stopped because of the pandemic and the, the we couldn't continue with with the process anymore but was, and they were hiring people only for the pandemic like only for the pandemic not that they were gonna get a permanent job there so then all the people like let me that we were barely entering we talked with people and saying like you know what you're, you're getting trying to get people to work in the pandemic but we are already here and we already want to start working and why don't you just hire us right and we were able to to follow the whole process and everything in in one end so i faced myself with this decision yeah. to make whether like to go and go to the hospital knowing that I was going to have COVID patients mm -hmm. or to stay here and keep on being the ship nurse that I wanted to be. Right. And then I really thought about it and I was like, even though if I'm working in the other hospital, even in my schedule matches to the other one, and even if I'm taking good care of myself and I get all my the measures that I have to take in order not to, to, to get sick, yeah. Am I gonna be a hundred percent sure that I'm gonna not gonna make any other person sick? You know, I was worried about getting it to my house, and I was so much worried as well as getting it to the other clinic. So I really had to to make the decision, and I, I say that I don't want nobody to die because of me. Right. Because what if I give that to uh, the virus? To, besides the family members to the patients that I have yeah. like I said the, the immune system is more compromised and everything right. I didn't want them to think it was me I didn't want me to know that I could give it to them so I I had to I had to just quit Jeez. and I, I chose and I I chose to quit the clinic well, it was a hard a tough decision yeah it was <laughs> yeah it was because mad. it was something that I, I had already decided I wanted and to follow and God knows how much I love my job on the days. <laughs> even though that I was there six days a week or sometimes even more and all day having to work double shifts and all that. A good thing there's people like you in this world because <laughs> you see a lot of people, you know, like I'm sure you, I don't know how it is over here, but there's a lot of people who quit. You know, they just... No, we had that. That's, that's what I'm saying. Maybe I didn't know why myself clear, but... People quit a lot because of the pandemic. That's right, why it was all crazy at the clinic. People were freaking out. Yeah, it was so did crazy. You, did, I mean, like you said, you experienced that with that patient. Were you, were you freaking out? You're like, man, this is going to be the end of the world. What, what did you think at first? Mm, I don't know if that happened with everybody, but I had asked that to my coworkers as well. And as what was the first reaction when they first were in, in front of a case like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And the first thing that you think is your family. Like man she's sick what about me if i get sick what about my family what if i get this sick? you know you're not even worried about yourself well, at least i was not worried about myself right. i was worried about like getting, it out. yeah spreading it out at home with the other patients and everything and you're like i think that i can handle it but can others right you know that that's that's what that happened to me so then here i am after march i quitted my other job and oh, I know. So you're gonna complete a a year, right? I mean, because the pandemic's already since yeah, the whole shutdown has been a year. I, I'm just trying to to process how everything was. March, I got the call, but then beginning of April, I had to quit. I, I quit it on, on on April. Yeah, I quit it on April, and I got. You quit injured. the chief being chief nurse. I, yeah, to I, start I, at the new hospital. Yeah, okay. and I had got an injury in my other job, so I didn't work after another 15 days. You got injured? I got injured on oh, my back. <laughs> uh, do you have this, how you say, reposet, those sillones, where do you put the patients at? Like, uh, not the couches, but the recliner maybe? Yeah, like, like the that? recliner. One was so old, and yeah. I had to push the patients so that they can lean, you know, to take the treatment. And one, one like that, I don't know, like something on my back. 
<laughs> it was just it was heavy or yeah, it was so heavy yeah. to to you pull it down too much pain. and i pull it down so and the patient pull it out oh. she wanted to go down but i think that she wanted to like take impulse or something and she went forward and i put it down and oh, yeah okay. so i injured myself and mm, but you're better now yeah yeah of course oh. it was just just that day, those days and i got 15 days off I wish it, they work for me those 15 days off because those were the days that I I had to to make my choice mm-hmm. whether to go back so you could, or you could be at home and then really think about it yeah not be distracted at work <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I did I remember I went back and and I worked for another one or two days i think that it was even just one because the pain was still strong after the 15 days and i just knew i remember i was so sad that they <laughs> even cried that that, that that i knew that that was my last day going to work with those patients because like i said you get so attached to those patients you get so attached because you see them so so much so often so often and and yeah but it was just better for them better for me and i quit there then i started working in this other hospital and since like i said i was injured i met most of the of the trainings that you get to work with the covered patients so i remember i told them the i went to the hospital i already told them you know what i'm here i was injured but i, I can get to work already it was a thursday or something that i that i went and I was going to be able to go back to work that weekend and they told me okay you can be here Sunday night Sunday night so at night like I knew I was not gonna get so much information on how to do stuff around COVID areas or so and it was still new to me because I had worked for years with the hemodialysis clinic you know so I had to go back to the general hospital with another kind of patients and I wasn't really getting nervous about it but to do the fact of knowing that I was going to work with COVID patients that added more scary. yeah it was all scary so I remember I went that time to the to my shift at night and I was so nervous but I was like it's okay somebody's going to be there and I'm going to be able to ask them or so you know yeah so I went in there was no step like it was really no oh, wow. step lots of the people were sick the staff were the sick the staff were sick wow so they were missing as well and they they were not leave of, of, of work and I just remember like going to the ship nurse right there and saying okay this is my name is this and that I'm new here where am I gonna be and he's like oh it's okay you're gonna go with this patients covered patients right away yeah. and I was like no but I'm new you know yeah. like I'm new <laughs> and they're like he asked me do you know how to do this this is and I was like yes I do and he's like okay there you go you put the the, the uniform like this and you're good to go and those were stable patients now that i think about it like, the patients were kind of good like you didn't have to do much to them but i was so nervous what kind, you know? what kind of protection were you guys having at, at the at the hospital did you guys look like the, you know those spacesuits like yeah of course the spacesuits <laughs> you um i am starting to think of the very first thing that i got there yeah in the hospital will give you your your the uniforms that they will wash there so you will change get the in um, uniform is chirurgicals, I don't know how to say that scrubs like the scrubs that they give you they give you some scrubs and they give you the space so it's like you say in the color the white ones so you have to put the scrubs then you have to put the 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 white suit then you put the pair of gloves first pair of gloves then the other suit then another pair of gloves oh, wow. and then you put another coat and on top of that you put a third pair of, suit of uh, gloves yep and then you put your glasses it must be very uncomfortable yes you put your your mask yeah. your n95 N95, mask uh-huh. and then you have to put your goggles and then you have to put another mask on top of it and then you had to put protection for your hair as well and then 
the little hoodie on top of the other one. Was it like hard to breathe or? Yes, of course. I mean, I was already used to having goggles because in hemodialysis you have to always wear mask and goggles. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're already used to it. Okay. I was already used to it. But then, be on top of this... How close this? Sorry about that. Just because uh, <laughs> that's already dark, uh, dark outside. <laughs> and yeah, but you don't get used to the goggles getting, how do you say, foggy? Oh, it gets fogged up? Yeah, that. And so you couldn't even see it. And of oh, course, wow. you couldn't touch anything. <laughs> so I remember I put, I put everything. That's and I, I, had, I was going to have somebody to help me out, you know? But then we were Sean and Steph, so it was just me, and then uh, somebody sure. was gonna go after, and I know it was just a little bit of Ted, but I was by myself, but I was, yeah. I remember that I was like, man, I put everything, I got my stuff, they told me do not bring anything in, you don't bring pants, you don't bring nothing, whatever you put in, nothing comes out. Oh wow. Once you go in, you don't go out. Yeah. Uh, because they told me that like nothing, something you bring in. Don't, don't, bring it don't bring it out. Right. You go in, you do not go out. Oh, wow. If you need something, you ask to somebody to, to get it. So is that like, I had this little, I went through the doors. It was this thing, how do you say, cortina. Curtain? Yeah, it was a thing like that too, that I had to move and going like that. I really didn't feel like I was going to space and stuff with all the suit I had. And then as soon as I passed that... Have you ever seen uh, E.T.? Uh, yeah, but that was a long time ago. It, you remember like uh, when they shut down the whole house and then like, you know, there's this like little... Like I said, everybody's in their little space suit whatever, so they don't get contaminated and just... Like, I don't know, just the little how you describe it reminded, reminded me of that I'm E.T. I'm pretty sure that if I do see it, it's gonna come back to me. Yeah. And then, um, so yeah, I, I felt so nervous, so I just... I didn't have to call myself and I had to pray. I was like, like, okay, God, let me be your hands and let me do my job. Like, right. let me just be calm to know whatever I know how to do because I know how to do stuff. So I came in, I did my stuff, I did my round and I knew what meds to, to put and everything, the check the IV and all that, right? I only had four patients. Like, I remember that I was so scared, but I had only four patients and they had no other meds, but you really had to be taking care of, of their breeding and, and all that, you know? Like, so I remember it was at night and my coworker came later. Before that time, I was checking on their oxygen. I was checking that they were breeding. I was checking that they were okay because yeah, I knew a little of, of this sickness. We all knew a right. little. And then we all take classes and curse uh, uh, a class about this later. We find out more stuff, but at the beginning it right. was. I mean, even today we still don't know so much information. Like, you know, they say one thing in the news and then they say another. So, like, to this day we still don't know exactly how this. Yeah, so if I'm the type of nurse that likes to be on top of, 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 the, of everything and check on their patients and everything. The, those days there were more stuff, stressful and I really was just there trying to see if everything was okay yeah. if, if, and like I said like uh, you could just check on that like check your, their their airways check your, if they needed oxygen if the oxygen was good or enough or so mm -hmm. and then out of that I remember when my co-worker came in and I felt so relieved, you know, like not being alone anymore. It wouldn't it was just for a little instant or whatever. But yeah, I remember being there was that night. So we had already gotten everything that we needed to do, put meds, put everything. Like I said, we just needed to to to, to be with them, to to be monitoring them. And all of a sudden we had this patients that, that he started to have a distress, like he couldn't breathe anymore. Mm -hmm. He had the oxygen already and we had to call a doctor in like i said it was a lack of women and lack of staff lack of staff uh, the doctor was already seeing another patient in another room and with us the patient was already getting back and the doctor had to to sort of still mm. 
And by the time that he that he was gonna suit up and everything, that he was able to come in. The patient was already the patient was already failing. And I remember that time that patient died. We did everything that we could, you know, and to 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 save it and everything. But that was pretty hard. I still and and yeah, like it, it was so frustrating for us, you know, like we treated it as a as as any other patients, you know, like because we had this 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 thing that of course if you want to do CPR, it it was dangerous for us because you really need to to be careful with the with the air they spray right. because they can enter to you. And so even on all that, like you didn't care about that, like, you didn't care about the virus, you didn't care about everything. Like if you wanted to just try to be there and help the patient and you, you wouldn't care about nothing else and you're like okay like something happened to me but I don't want nothing to happen to my patient right now. I need to like do everything on my hands to save this patient. And yeah, like I remember that it was that was pretty hard. It was yeah, like we experienced with this all all times, but like experiencing with an own uh, unknown disease and and seeing this it was it was pretty hard yeah. at least on me right no i'm pretty sure it's hard on, on everybody but especially you know being a nurse you know seeing that on a daily basis you know dealing with patients you know and like you said like i i can't imagine that feeling where like you have a patient that's like you know, you know like dying and then you said the doctor can't even attend them quick because they still gotta you know protect themselves they gotta put on their, their yeah, gear yeah 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 and, 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 and those seconds you know that's crucial time but it's not only that then like uh, i'm just talking you know that the, my very first night there then that's the first night that first night wow. there yeah that was the first night there and then how long you been here huh how long you been there what do you mean like at the, at the hospital how long you've been working now mm-hmm. now it's been almost a year well that was and like said a, that was just the first night a little taste of my yeah, goodness. yeah, yeah, and then the following days, we had good lots, lots of doctors right there. Yeah, they, like, we have lots of, of staff now. I remember the the before every six patients, we were even like three nurses, okay. and then the doctors we have like residents, the one that they do an internship, the ones that the the main doctors in charge and everything and still they were not enough you know because like of course you gotta have a team if a patient is allocated and it's fallen into hard stress or something mm-hmm. you need to have a whole team there right. and then it's not only one patient it's another one patient in the next room it's another one patient in the next right. other room then another next patient in the other room so it was just never enough as much stuff that we had there as does like you never get enough that's why the, that night I, I just thought to myself, like, how can we be so little, like, like uh, on stuff, you know? How can we be so, like, just a few of us yeah. here? But it wasn't that it was a few of us here. It was just a few where it was. But the whole hospital was like that, like, patients everywhere, patients um, getting bad everywhere. Uh, it was just really sad, really, really sad. Um, you will go out of the hospital, and you would just think like how people can be walking on the street right now how people can be just not wearing their masks how people can be not like taking care of themselves this is really bad right it's totally bad and well i remember that day i came out to the house and my husband was here and and he had to go to work and I remember I told him like you just go to work like um, I don't want to find you there when I'm when I get here like I want to like, wash my clothes I put it on Clorox I want to put it, everything away and I just wanted to shower because because yeah after seeing that patient getting so bad the less that you wanted a, a person like any person but a person close to you your family to to pass through that right. you know and yeah and you have like I you know you hear cases of, like that all the time you know where where uh, you have husbands and wives, you know, especially older couples, they're living in separate rooms because, you know, they don't want to infect their partner. They don't want to... Yeah, and then at least over here, 
we heard of a of a of doctor like this case was a doctor that she had after her truck so she could live in there so she couldn't go back to her family oh, because wow. she had only she was the one in charge like of all COVID yeah. not not all COVID but she was only in charge of COVID that's what I would say she was only in charge in the COVID section and she didn't want to go to go back to her right. family and to get them infected and and lots of stuff happened like that like. Like I said, like we were all afraid of coming back to home. You were afraid of, of what were, what's going on in the hospital, like lots of people dying, and lots of people getting bad, and then still of that, I like, have to come home and worry not about yourself, but to the other ones, you know? And the, the things that, that, I also saw that like we all wanted to help. At least I didn't find any other staff member over there, let's say, in the, that didn't want to be there. I mean, the ones that didn't want to be there, they just quit. So the ones being there is because they didn't want to help. The real heroes. Yeah, and and just that, and the 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 ones that we were with, the, the we had family waiting for us. We were really strict on how to take off your or shoes, leave it over there in the hospital, come with another clothes, come in and wash it, and all that, and. And the ones living by themselves, I remember they were working double shifts or so, so that they can help better the 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 old crisis that we were at the, having at the hospital. Nice. Yeah, so it was pretty hard. So uh, at that time, it was so frustrating, even receiving a phone call for relatives or something, because they would always ask the same thing. So is this thing true? Is this really a virus going on? And it would get me so, 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 so mad. Like, I remember, like, not even wanting to talk on the phone. I was like, oh, you know what? I gotta leave. Or, right. like, I don't, I didn't want to convince people that this thing was going on. Right. And, and, and yet again, like, people wouldn't believe that. People even wouldn't believe that we were killing in the hospital, that we were doing this on purpose. Like, it was a government's ambition to go this or that, you know, a lot of stuff that right. sometimes you say, like, kidding. But people mean it. But it's it. Yeah, there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there. Yeah, but that's like, like I say, like sometimes you just like joke around saying, oh, what if this and that. Mm-hmm. But then people were really like. Take it serious. Yeah. Oh, man. And, uh, you know, it's crazy because, you know, a lot of people, you see them wear their mask and. And yet still, like, this virus was able to spread so much and, you know, shut down the whole world pretty much. Um. Like I said, it's a year and you know, a lot, a lot of places are still closed. Um, Texas, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's on their mind. I'll, yeah, it's because... I mean, I, maybe, maybe I understand them opening, but you can't tell people, hey, you don't have to wear your mask anymore. Like, that, still, that's, that's, that's the thing, because at least over here where we live, uh, things are not fully open to the max level. Things are not, like, we all telling them wear masks, wear this, mm-hmm. and you yet see all the people out. You see all the people already doing their lives. You see a lot of people like with masks and getting infected and still going to the hospitals. It's not as bad as as before. I would say in our hospitals, but previous months we had a we had it really bad. And like I'm saying, over here with now all the restrictions getting over, we we have it bad. Imagine over there right. with no masks, with no restrictions, with no nothing right. going and doing that. I hope everybody does okay, but, but yeah. And, uh, I was going to ask you this, since, you know, you're, we're here in Tijuana, um, you know, which is the border, uh, Mexico and U.S., do you find, do you find, uh, a lot of Americans, like, coming over here, you know, like, come, like, respectful of, of the people, or they come here, you know? Because, like, California is in complete shutdown, so do, are people escaping to Mexico to, you know, have fun over here, or do you uh, feel... Things like, I wouldn't say disrespectful, because, like, no, I have never, like, thought that they can be here and respectful at all. But, I I go to, I go to the store because I have to. Like, I'd rather to empty my, my things in the house, my food and everything before having to go just because, you know? Right. So that they have to go, I see... The people with lots of toilet paper. Mm. I don't know why toilet paper, but toilet paper. <laughs> and you see them like, okay, 
coincidence, whatever, they just speak in English and then yeah, like taking all the toilet paper, taking all the groceries and everything. And I was like, okay, like if you need it, take it. But I'm not saying like I see them with this little thing of toilet paper. You know, Costco, those things that you pull. The carts. Yeah. The big carts, huh? Yeah, the big ones. Like, I had. It, I don't know if the whole disciples of me of toilet paper and stuff like that. I'm like, why do you guys even do that? Do you guys did it over I, there? I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I really couldn't explain that either. Like, people were freaking out over toilet paper, and you know, they just started buying everything. And and like I said, maybe the first time, like, like you know, like if the government said, "Hey, we're gonna shut down," which I think they did initially. The govern the the shutdown, right? I think they did that at first, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. People still go out and they're just hoarding it. They're like, and they're not being conscious of other people, you know. Like, there's other people who, who, you know, may be at work, so they don't have time to go to the market early in the morning, and and just because you know this other person, they're not working at the time. You know, they buy all the the toilet paper, and sometimes they don't even keep it for themselves. They're just even buying it so it. they can sell it, so they can make yeah. a profit. That that's the worst part of this this pandemic thing. People trying to make profit out of the needs of somebody else. I agree. Yeah, like oxygen, like tax of oxygen. Oh, people are selling that. Like, I, I wasn't aware. Like that's a thing. People are selling oxygen tanks. Yeah, they were like to really hard prices. I'm not saying like that. That was like totally a thing. But I heard cases that they were selling it, or it was really hard to find. Uh, the tanks of the oxygen for people or yeah even like Lysol wipes were hard to La- find Lysol uh, I, I, I'm I'm still not to wash your hands uh, anti sanitizer sanitizer there you go sanitizer. Lysol I haven't seen those uh-huh. in more than a year I have never so they're just gone <laughs> they're just gone at least every time that I go the only cost where I can find them like I've never been able to to see them right and hand sanitizer yeah like they're all they were all gone those days and lots of stuff you know mm-hmm. and you would say okay it's okay if you, they're all taken it's for people to wear but that's the most frustrating part is that it's not for people to wear it's for them to sell it right. because of us that we can't find them anymore right. and, and that's, that's the thing I think that was the worst that has been yeah, the that, worst that, that really the worst is thing. like the shitty part about humans uh, you know even doc- doctors and nurses you know I'm pretty sure they were having a hard time finding a know what's called gloves and and masks and things things that they need for work but you know people are buying them all up just so that they can resell them at a higher price which is really unfortunate yeah yeah. like in the the private clinic that i told you that i worked in it was pretty hard like we were having troubles to 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 get this stuff and and the other hospital that i work on like i said is a public institution government thing we haven't had that lack we didn't have it as bad, so, so it was Texas, a, a good thing. I'm glad you guys are opening up, but be smart about it. Do social distancing. You know, uh, wear your mask. Please wash your hands. And yeah, because I mean, we don't want it a, a third wave. We don't want this coming back and and shutting it down for even longer. You know, spreading it. But uh, yeah, uh, is there anything else that? Uh, that you would like to talk about uh yeah like just just i would like to say that the this pandemic has to bring something to learn from all of us like all of us either the people that were lucky that stay at home and work at home because some of us we can stay at home and work mm-hmm. from them and you should just like take the time to 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 appreciate the things that we have Either if you want to go out, if you can, I like, appreciate that. So if you have to go out, like, be out with the mask, be out with the, you know, cautions, be, being caution of or whatever <laughs> thing that it can be. If you get the opportunity to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. I already got vaccinated and it's all good. Nice. Do you know which one did you get? The Pfizer one. Pfizer. And did you feel any side effects or anything? Thing is that I wasn't really eating so well <laughs> or, or getting enough liquids as I should had before. Yeah. And 
So I remember the day I went, I, the previous day I hadn't even drank enough water. So, so I took my shot and it was all good. I just feel the arm pretty heavy. Uh, not at the moment, if later. And the good thing is that I have the two days later off after I took the shot. The following day, my, I had my uh, a little egg, a bruise. little no bruise. No, I just felt my arm heavy, okay. and that was it. But I, you you feel that with some other shots too, which is just normal. Okay. And and I feel a little headache, and then my eyes will hurt, and then I would just feel a little weird, you know, like weird. It was something weird for me. I couldn't describe it. I even told my husband that I feel like if I had a hangover. <laughs> and I just felt weird like he would tell me like oh, 1 out of 10 how bad it hurts and I couldn't even say a 1 it was just something that I felt weird right. so that night I asked for a cup of water and I remember getting another one and then he says that like he gave me so many waters <laughs> that, that I just drank a lot of water and the next morning I woke up just as that's great nothing happened no more no more nothing, no more headaches, no yeah. more other pains. So you're dehydrated. Yeah, I was dehydrated from previous days, I yeah. would say. But other than that, I didn't feel anything better. It was just pretty okay. And some other co-workers, they did say that uh, the following day, they did have those kind of symptoms. They felt a little hotter, a little bit of headache or so, but it's just, just not as bad. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, same thing. Lots of water, lots of everything. And they're just good to go after that, after the other day. And, and um, you know, so so you recommend people getting their vaccine for sure then? I was even afraid of it, I got to admit myself. But then, like, all the vaccines were just new at its time, you know, and we already have it on, on our schedule to right now, like, all babies get them. Really? Uh, you know that? No, I'm saying like regular vaccine. No, oh. no, the, oh. not COVID, not COVID. I'm <laughs> saying, <laughs> I'm saying regular vaccines were new at its time. You know, yeah. they were all were new. And I'm pretty sure people, at one point. yeah, I'm pretty sure people were afraid of them. Mm -hmm. But now, they all good. We're all regulated. We get vaccines already, and this is gonna be it too. It's like the I don't know how you call it, influenza shot. Mm -hmm. Do you? I don't know if you guys get it like regular as well, but yeah, we, we have a yearly the influenza shot. Same over here. Same thing. It's just like something that maybe it's gonna have to accommodate to us. The flu is the same as influenza, right? Yeah, right. I believe so. Flu is influenza. I think. I don't <laughs> know. No. I have to. It's cause. Pretty sure it is. For me, it's to translate. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, and uh. You know, before 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 we finish this, we wrap this up. You know, uh, can you talk a little bit about, about Tijuana? Like, you know, is is you know, is this where you grew up? Is this where you, you know where you were born? Or no, 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 not at all, not at all. <laughs> I was born in Zacatecas. I stayed there until I was 17 years old. Then I moved to LA. I went to study there. Then I moved back to Guadalajara. I went to a nursing school over there and I finished, I worked and then I got to see the love of my life again. <laughs> After many years I hadn't seen him and he went to visit me in Guadalajara but, but for this I, I, I couldn't, I didn't get again my visa. So we decided to come to live here in, in Tijuana. Nice. and. Uh is it, do you feel it's dangerous, uh, scary? Like, I don't know, like, growing up, you know, when you hear Tijuana, you hear... Yeah, I, I know, city. I hear that it's a dangerous city, and I even thought that myself. So, when we were dating, and we will come back often, we will travel often here to TJ, and, and I actually did fall in love with it. I fell in love, especially with the section of Playas de Tijuana. I like it a lot. Mm. And it's nothing of what people say. And it's, it is really nice, it's a nice area, people it's nice as well, everybody's willing to help you out and they're all friendly, there's lots of places to go, there's not much that we have 
gone so far because of this pandemic thing. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we go soon. But I like it a lot. I I do do, do like it a lot. Um, I'm glad I'm glad you're happy with your move, and uh, you know I really appreciate all, all everything that you do for work and everything. Uh, and you're a really great person helping out. Seems like uh, that is your calling, and it seems like you you enjoy that. You're happy that this is something you want to do, not that you were forced to do. So, you know, thank you for everything that you do. Um, you want to give a shout out to anybody or? Oh, let's. I would say especially to all the family, to, to all the people that lost a family member out there. Like we all with you, and I do assure you that as whole staff right here, like we all trying to to take care of your patients, to take care of your people, and the ones that, that they're already gone. Like we really did our best to take care of them. So please take care of yourselves as well, because we don't want no more lives to be ending. Right, right. No. That's very important. You know, just do the best you can to avoid the hospital. You know, not go to hospital. But if you do have to go, just know that you know there are good people, people such as yourself, that are willing to help uh, take care of them. So. Yeah. No. Uh, well, thank you so much for for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys uh, next time. All right. Bye. Bye. Wait, uh, be <laughs> before we end this, uh, one, one, I have one more thing, because I, I did want to talk about it. Uh, so when, what was the most, you know, touching story of, or, you know, your highs, your low, they, something you want to share, you know, during this whole pandemic? I have a story about, like, what, COVID, being inside COVID and... Uh, I don't know, whatever you want. Like, I remember that, that talking with my co-workers right there, and he was telling me that a very touching story that he that he was able to to present <laughs> like to be there it was that um, he had this patient that he was always talking about like he was get, he wanted to get good for his family you know okay. like to to go back to to, meet recover. With, to recover to be with his family okay and that he was gonna do it all good to be back with his wife and his kids and after that we like he will tell us a couple of stories about their family and then in another room we had this lady that same same thing like that he knew she knew that her husband was bad of COVID so she wanted to recover but because of at the time that he went home mm -hmm. he was gonna get worried that she wasn't home so she wanted to recover so she could get home to him and be taking care of his family as well. And then he would tell the stories as well about the family. And it was one time that this stories match and she's just like, and my coworker was like, Wait, this happened to you and your family? Because I have another patient that they say told me kind of the same story, you know? And then they found out that they were at the same time <laughs> there at the hospital. Oh wow. Yeah, a couple. <laughs> and then um they didn't know they were yeah they didn't know that they, they were there wow yeah i know and then um they finished they they ended up living together and recovering together which was great as well mm -hmm. it, I, I knew that they have a couple of, of kids as well have not kids because they were not a little bit some of the, the children the son daughters uh they had gotten sick as well and when I, we're at the hospital as well so I'm, not the whole family. No, I'm not saying the whole family but lots of the members of the family that's what I'm saying the whole like the, the parents and the kids yeah yeah but yeah. I'm saying lots of members were, were there in the hospital and were able to recover full and get out and I don't know if it was the same patient I had but one time that I was in hemodialysis of that clinic this patient was telling me his story and I think that it was the same. He told me the same story. I was in the hospital covered. My wife was in the hospital covered here. We got recovered. We went and we went home. Our kids were also sick. And one of them, the kids, they, they, they didn't make it. 
I wasn't so oh. young. I was in its 20s, something like that, 30s. Mm-hmm. I mean, not to be a kid, but it was really, really young person. And they were surprised. They were really surprised at them being older, him being with that, you know, thing that we were talking about, the patients with the kidney failure and everything was able to, to, to make it out. And it was so sad that, that one of his kids couldn't make it back with them. But just never know with this virus. Yeah, you just never know. You just totally never know. Yeah. But it was just one incredible thing that having the family inside there and they not even knowing they were there at the same time. But at least them two, the husband and wife, were able to recover and get, get out as well. Oh. And they were trying their best to to get back to each other to get home. Well, I guess that wasn't such a, in the end, it wasn't such a happy story. Because, <laughs> yeah, like, I asked, I was like, uh, well, a happy story? And then you're like, well, the kid died. I was like, ah. No, I'm saying, I'm saying that, like I said, my coworker told me this story that I was so happy about, you know, like, but then I, I was able to talk to this another patient, which I'm not saying, I don't know if it was the same patient. Like, mm-hmm. it's just another one that I really talked to myself that told me this story. And that did. I just thought that was sad. <laughs> if that was true with the I mean, it is true because right. he told me about about the kid. But out of almost a lot of the members of the family being on the hospital with COVID, most of them being able to recover, it was good because there was a time that I was even wondering when I first went there, do they ever gonna recover? Uh, they were gonna go out of the hospital because I was in the area where they were all bad, you know. Yeah. And as soon as I saw, we'll see patients getting better, the first thing that we got a patient to get home to release a patient, we were all happy and celebrating and all that. Just little by little, when they were all going home, yeah, it was just just better. So, and then uh, when people go to the hospital, I mean. Is there a number you would say like fifty fifty that they do make it out or or if they no, go to the hospital usually they always die or what would you no, say? No, no, not yet. But, I, but we can't really say a number. I, I can really tell tell you a number that it's just like it's at the beginning of the pandemic we had a lot of cases that were pretty bad, and and then later like. And have you seen it, the numbers go down or is it still up? Right or? now they they have gone down. Okay. They have gone down. It's not as bad as 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 before and right. we hope to continue like that but yeah we don't want a third wave now right. so yeah and, uh, is was there any patients maybe who like they didn't want to be there like just get me out of here so, yeah, we had patients that they were trying to escape escape <laughs> escape really? and you you can uh, at least not over here you cannot force them mm-hmm. you're like okay you want to get out you're gonna sign something that you can alta voluntaria se llama yeah. you just Say you don't want to be treated, that you're gonna go home, you go home, but then like, your family have to come pick you up, and also, oh, that, you wow. know, like. How would they try to escape? Is there any stories about that? It's because it's th- they just told me, you know, like I wasn't really there, but yeah. I remember that, that like, some co workers told me that they were these patients that they were just. But because the doors are not locked, it's not like a mental institution you yeah. need to take care of your patients. not like doors are not locked, like you're able to come through and everything. And we had this patient that he was already going to the elevator and he had already passed all the, all the power of the. How you say? Well, the barrier we have for protection. Like oh, for, okay. you know, the curtain that you were talking about. No, not one curtain, the doors and everything. And, and yeah where well you sanitize yourself and everything uh-huh. the patient was already out so they got it <laughs> and they took it inside and I guess I know that you can you can make them be there but if they want to sign themselves out of it they can <laughs> but yeah this so we, we know if someone gets uh, thrown into prison who's gonna try to escape <laughs> imagine oh wow yeah. oh yeah, is, is there any other stories you'd, you'd like to share? Any? Now that I come to my mind, no. Well, just, just, I, I, I was... Well, I remember you, you sorry to interrupt, uh, I remember, you, you know, you said you connected a lot with your patients at the, you know, dialysis place. Uh, 
you know, it seems like you you had connected connected with your patients. Um, you know, is there is there a patient that comes to mind that like, you know, I don't know, treated you good or you had a, I don't know, whether he or she? I, I say I, I can. Well, yes, of course, you always have a special one. You know, your, like your, your favorite <laughs> patient. <laughs> It's because I can have a baby and they're all good. And they're there. It's just... You get so attached to them, you know? And it's just so many good stuff about many of them. And it's just so sad to now that I'm not working there and just that I get to hear that they had already passed away or so. That it just makes me so, so sad. But like I said, it's just good to, to get to have the time to... To be with them, to help them out, and to to see them follow through their lives, because even these patients with with care failures, they they do they live pretty good as long as they take care of themselves and everything. They can last last lots of years, even if they have to be going three times a week or so. Right. So yeah, they're they're all good. What I was gonna tell you, like if you ask me about a story that I really can't remember about it. It will have to be bad to copy. <laughs> that, that, yeah, I remember I had this this patient that, that she wanted to. She was just older, but crying and all this is great, you know, like saying, you know what, I can breathe, I can, I feel this bad and this and that. You, you see his her oxygen and it went so low, and for me to be for her, because. Yeah, you, you have uh, tenia puntillas de alto flujo, so oxygen to the max level with the special ones. And, and it was, she was doing really good. She was, sat, her, her saturation was 94% and everything. And as soon as she got worried, like it was so, so down that we thought that we had to put it in a, how do you say? Ventilator? Yeah, ventilator. And... Before that, I, I remember I, I, I was I was just talking to her and I was able to tell her, you know what, you can do this. You this cannot be stronger than you. Like you got this. Like you you can do it for yourself and even for the per- people that is waiting for you out there. I know it's scary, but calm down. Like calm down. I'm here. Look at me to my eyes and breathe. Breathe. Like I told her. Like I believe in God so much. If you do or do not like if you can go like, to a happy place like you can just can go to it with your kids like making sure that you're gonna make it out of here and think about the happiest moment that you ever had or the moral calm down like just think about it if you think about it don't be sad or don't be like i want to be out like think about it be calm try to breathe and i remember like she calming down and feeling better and so and i told her you want to pray pray and you want me to pray with you i pray for you or if you want me to talk to you, talk, talk to you out of it, like, let me, let me just do it, let me just help you out. And like, yeah, like, I remember, like, her expression, like, like, she, like, like I say, I saw so many patients, like, I saw so many patients pass through a lot of stuff, like, like, being there, like, with a whole team of, of doctors, nurses, and everything, doing all, all, us doing everything as possible to, to be for them. But for that moment, that it was just like a matter of one minute or so for her trying to calm down, to be able to connect, to be able to calm her down, and for her to start reading better, normal or so, and seeing her recovering and getting out of the hospital and getting good, and her saying, oh, you know what, thank you for those words, thank you for the, doing this, like, yeah, that brings me such a joy, you know, like, yeah. it brings me so good, like, seeing a patient that she was in a crisis, and, and I did understood that, that being inside there, like, it was so traumatic for patients and for ourselves, yeah, like, we were in this special suit that we had to come in, but we wouldn't see ourselves right there, you know, like, mm-hmm. the patients are in a bed with nothing on use a mask and seeing us walk around like this it was pretty traumatic for them as well right yeah so, it's scary for them like seeing somebody like and they were so protected like that <laughs> yeah exactly so like just even being able to connect with the patient and 
be able to talk to them, being able to say like, you know what, breathe, calm down, do not stress, everything's gonna be good, and that's a word. Well, that it, one. I think you hit on something important, like um, having like that mindset, you know, having being positive, being strong, you know, and it's it's really good of you to to help people, who, who, you know, guide them through with it rather than you know panicking and making you know the situation worse than it can be. Yeah, yeah, and I can really tell that that out there and all the the coworkers that I have, um, I'm kind of the last ones that did as much stuff over there because lots of, of of people right there were all good, all good with the patients, all good with everything. Is not just me, you know, like the whole team was just good with with everything. Mm-hmm. I can really say that, like. We were trying to be on top of things, trying to be as giving our best for the patient. So, yeah. Well, God bless you, and um, you know, I can tell that you really care, not just for yourself, but you know, for those around you and your patients. You know, strangers that you're willing to help them, and you're just such a positive person. And like I said, we need more people like you as well. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to share? <laughs> well, I guess <laughs> I share so much stuff already. I guess, and I just how about no, I? No, I mean I'm sure like you have tons of stories. You know, yeah, so exactly. Like, I wouldn't finish it, <laughs> and there's just just. Well, I'm sure more you know if, if you if you enjoy this, you know maybe we'll we'll catch up again, and hopefully this pandemic is over, and we'll we'll be able to tell some. You know, some good stories rather than just, you know, a couple of sad stories. But yeah. Tell more happy stories. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'm just proud not to share happy stories and turn it into sad ones. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, well, thank you so much for doing this once again. I really appreciate it. Hi, Dave. All right. All right, everybody. Uh, oh, we haven't even said it. Let them know. Uh, to subscribe, hit the like button. Share. Share. Comment. Comment. Everything. Yeah, there you go. You know what's up. <laughs> she knows what's up. I think she's probably a YouTuber herself. Of course. In my free time. <laughs> Apart from being a nurse, she's a famous YouTuber. Do you have any social media I don't know, that you want to share? Or I don't know if you... Um, no. no. Not really. I don't no. even yeah, have an Instagram I never even... I have never even used. No. So. so you're not like... Yeah. You're, the you're not like the, the nurses doing the, TikToks. The Carrendo Show is the social media to share. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> check out the Corinda show. Yeah, we have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Check us out. Alright, well, thank you so much once again. Appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Bye bye.